Hi you guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Grace and I'm so thankful that you're here. If you are returning, welcome back. I'm so thankful that you're here. Oh my goodness, it means the world to me. So in today's video, I have decided to split this into two parts. So I have 10 things to talk to you future or brand new twin or multiples mamas. Okay, 10 things that I have learned, either the, the good way, the easy way, because I did research beforehand, or the hard way that I've just lived it. My girls are now eight months old, so I have been a twin mama for eight solid months, and whoo, I have learned a lot. Okay, so 10 things, they're in no particular order, but there are things, either advice, or tips, or just things that I'm going to let you off the hook. I think especially with uh, being a new mama slash being a new multiples mama, you feel so much pressure. And so some of these things, I'm just letting you off the hook. So grab a drink. I got my iced coffee. We're just going to have a chit chat. Okay. So again, this is going to be part one of part two. I will link part two below as soon as it goes live. But let's get into it. This is a mama to mama chit chat. So first off, ooh, this one might be a little controversial. We're just starting off with a bang. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be real with you. Okay. If you are a first time mama pregnant with multiples, there is a very large chance you might end up with a C-section, either a scheduled C-section or an emergency C-section. And that is just what it is. Nobody hopes for a C-section, I don't think. But C-sections are actually a really good thing. How blessed are we that we live in a time that C-sections exist, okay? So first off, I don't want you to feel any shame any shame whatsoever if you have a c-section. I had a scheduled c-section. There's a couple reasons why a c-section may happen for you. First off, there are two or more babies in there that need to be in a good position for a, I'm going to call it a natural birth, but what I mean is like just, you know, non-c-section birth. There are some doctors that are comfortable doing a breech birth, but many doctors aren't. So that's something you can talk to your OB or your midwife about, but many doctors are not. So both babies have to be in a good position. That's one thing. And for me, one of my babies was in the perfect position. The other baby was breech and transverse literally the entire pregnancy. So she wasn't in a great position. The other reasons why you might have to have a C-section is if it is your first birth, Doctors don't know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm always going to say doctors because I had a doctor, but if you're using a midwife or whatever, just, I, I include those, I'm, I'm just going to say doctor because that's what I had, but if you have a midwife, totally fine. Um, a doctor or a midwife isn't going to know how your body is going to react to birth, and that was kind of a big um, thing for mine. Um, not only did I have one baby in the wrong position, but also my mom had three C-sections and my sister had one natural birth, which went very poorly and then one C-section. So based on the history of those women that are related to me, it seemed like there's a chance that maybe my body wouldn't take to a natural birth super well. Does that mean that I couldn't have tried? Sure, absolutely. And my doctor was actually super nice and super open to it. And he was like, we scheduled the C-section and he was like, that morning we can check the position of the babies. And if you want to try, you know, for a natural birth, we can try. But what I really, really didn't want to happen, and this is what happens to frequent multiples mamas, is you might have one of your babies natural and then you have to go and have an emergency C-section for the other baby. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I just felt it deep down. And I think there's, there is some, some truth to like listening to your intuition or your gut feeling. I felt like I was going to end up with a C-section. So I could have tried to have Evie natural, but I just felt 
that something was going to happen and Winnie was going to have to be a C-section. And she was the baby that they were worried about the whole C-section or the whole pregnancy anyway. So I just felt comfortable, more comfortable scheduling a C-section. I have an entire two, two very long videos that you can watch about my C-section experience just to get yourself you know, knowledgeable and possibly mentally prepared. Um, so I will link those down below and they'll be floating around here as well. So you can watch those, but my C-section was, it was not a big deal. You guys, it was fine. And my recovery, Oh, that's my phone. Sorry. Let me turn that on. So I won't. Um, my recovery wasn't fun, but I think I in particular had a more difficult recovery than a lot of women because I talked to a number of women that had c-sections after the fact and I think I had a particularly difficult recovery so I don't think my story of recovery is necessarily the norm so anyway all that is to say I just want you to mentally wrap your mind around the possibility of a c-section I have seen so many videos like this of women talking about how disappointed they are in their birth story and how they don't feel like they actually gave birth because nothing fell, followed their birth plan. And their birth plan was to have like a truly natural birth with like no medicine or anything, no pain relief or anything. They wanted to have like a home birth in a tub and then it turned out to be a C-section and they just feel so gutted and disappointed. And those feelings are valid, but I also want you to remember that like the ultimate goal is for you and your babies to be happy and healthy. And if that means you have to have a C-section, it's okay. It really is. It doesn't take any anything from your birth experience. It doesn't... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Something that makes me so mad is when, especially people, I'm, I'm not going to lie, women that have like the natural home births, not all of them. I don't mean all of them. I have many friends that have this and they are wonderful. But I've heard so many people online that are like, they look down upon moms who had C-sections because they don't think you had an actual birth, you know, you need a help. Like, oh my gosh, shove a sock in it. Like I, mm -mm. so please don't listen to those kind of women. Those women I kind of hope that karma will get to them eventually and they'll have to have their own C-section so they'll see that, oh girl, it is not the easy way out. Who it is not. But it's really, it's also not anything to be super scared of. Yeah. So anyway, I just want you to wrap your head around the possibility of having to have a C-section because it's really not that big of a deal, but having multiples does up your chance. My doctor said when he has um, multiples mamas come in, he tells Singleton mamas, there's like an 80% chance you'll have a natural birth, 20% chance it'll be a C-section. And then he said for C-section mamas, he flips it. So it was an 80% chance I would have a C-section, 20 natural. And I did have a C-section. I scheduled, it was fine. Go watch my videos if you're curious. So that one was my longest one. The rest of them won't be this long. Okay, next up, I want to talk, this is another controversial one. My first two are very controversial. My next one is breastfeeding. Let's talk breastfeeding. Whatever your breastfeeding journey is, is fine, okay? If you plan on breastfeeding and you're able to breastfeed your children for like one to two years, that's great. If you are like me and you want to breastfeed but breastfeeding doesn't really work out and you have to go to formula or you have to go to exclusively pumping, it's fine. That was my story. If you don't want to breastfeed and you just want to exclusively pump or you want to go straight to formula, that's fine. Whatever your breastfeeding journey is, is fine, it's valid, it's beautiful. But what I really want to focus on is if breastfeeding doesn't work out, okay? Because I really wanted to breastfeed. I wanted to be that super mom who was like tandem breastfeeding my babies. It didn't work out. I breastfed like on the actual boob for about seven weeks and then I had to give up. I cried and cried and cried and I felt like such a failure. Looking back, it was not a big deal. It didn't work out for me for a couple reasons. One was one of my babies just was never super interested in it. She just, ugh, she just wasn't interested. The other baby was so small. They were both super small, but one of them, 
which I've talked about a little bit in past videos. She was so small that like she physically, her mouth was not big enough to breastfeed. She had to do bottle. And we tried breastfeeding. We tried, you know, we, we tried so many things. I worked with lactation consultants for weeks and it just didn't work out. Okay. So I became an exclusive pumper. And then after about five months, yeah, I think it was five months, I stopped pumping and we just went straight to formula. But I always supplemented with formula as well. And this was really hard for me emotionally, especially as a postpartum mama. Everything just seems like such a big deal. And it really wasn't a big deal. And my babies are so healthy. Like every time we go to the doctor and every time people see them out in public, they're like, oh my gosh, those are twins. They're huge. Like they, and actually they aren't huge percentile wide, but like they are so healthy. And so it just, please don't feel pressure. If your breastfeeding journey does not work out the way that you want, or if you have a gut feeling that you don't want to breastfeed to begin with, it's fine. One thing that I absolutely hate is when people are like, and this isn't, this isn't bashing breastfeeding moms who are like, you know, Breastfeeding is such a bonding experience. Sure it is. That's fine. But if you don't breastfeed, don't feel like you're not going to bond with your baby just as much. Oh my gosh. I promise you will ha be just as bonded. Just as bonded. Please. That was what really got to me. Guess what? My babies are obsessed with me. <laughs> and they're obsessed with their dad who never breastfed them. Okay? So... Do not let that hinder you. That's one of the things that, like, I really thought was going to bother me is I wasn't going to be as bonded to my girls if I wasn't breastfeeding. Girl, no. You're going to be just as bonded. Your babies are obsessed with you just because you're mama, okay? <laughs> or dada, whatever. You are, they are so as obsessed with you. And then the other thing... Um, oh, and then let's just briefly talk about how formula is great for your babies. <laughs> don't, don't freak out that your babies aren't going to be, you know, as, as good or healthy or strong or whatever. They're going to be just fine with formula. Actually with breast milk, you have to add vitamin D to it. Well, you don't have to, but you're supposed to because breast milk doesn't have vitamin D. What formula does? What formula doesn't have necessarily is the like immune system boosting stuff that they get from mama. So if you're able to breastfeed or pump, that's great because that is, that's a bonus. And for me, I stopped pumping and stuff at five months, but they really, it's that like first two to three months that the immune system stuff is really, really helpful and beneficial. So if you're able to pump or breastfeed for the first three months, that's great. But again, if you're not, that's okay too. There are some moms that literally they don't produce enough breast milk. That was another issue for me is after about five months, my, my body stopped producing enough for my babies. So I kind of was forced to stop too. So please just, just, it's okay. And you also, you don't owe anyone an explanation about your breastfeeding journey. I didn't tell too many people about my breastfeeding journey, and that's been totally fine. Next up, let's talk mom guilt. Mom guilt is going to happen to every single mom in the entire world, but I think it hits multiples moms especially because you have two or more babies to deal with. So sometimes you have to give one baby a little bit more attention in a day than you do the other, and you feel so guilty about it. Or maybe this this happens. Maybe there's a baby for a certain amount of time that you feel a little bit more bonded to. And then you feel super guilty about that. It is okay. Everything is okay. Everything is, is, a, is a time. It's a, a phase. A phase, I guess, is the better time. A better word to use. So it's okay. If you have a baby who's not feeling great and needs extra mama snuggles or you have a baby who's a little more independent than the other. That was my my thing. I had one baby who was like totally content, like she loved me, but or she loves me, but like she's a little bit more independent. Whereas the other one loves, loves, loves cuddles and snuggles. It is okay if one baby requires some more snuggles or it's okay if there's a baby who's not feeling well and needs a little bit more mama attention. Or it's okay, it really is okay if you feel a little bit more connected to one baby at a certain amount of time. Obviously don't neglect the other one obviously. But 
babies have personalities just like adults do. And so sometimes as their personalities are developing, you might slightly connect to one a little bit more than the other. That'll change. It really will. As their personalities continue to develop, then there will be things about the other baby that you really connect to. So just let the mom guilt go. I know it's really, it's easier said than done, but just just do your best. If you're enjoying this video, it's a whole lot of talking in this video, but I would love it if you could consider subscribing. You can hit the little um, uh, button down below and the bell so that you know, especially when part two is going to come in a few days. Two more things. I'm gonna go through these quite quickly. You don't have to buy two of everything or three of everything, depending on how many babies you have. Whether it comes to clothes or swings or Bottle, well, bottles you do need to buy a lot of, let's be real. But there are certain things that you really don't need to buy two of. Sometimes when I would be buying clothes, I would be like, this this outfit is so cute, it's on sale, but there's only one. And I'm not even talking about like matchy, matchy stuff. I'm just saying like, I can't just buy one outfit because I have two babies. Yeah, you can, because only one baby is going to wear that one outfit at a time. So it is totally fine to just buy one of certain things. When it comes to like swings and bouncers and things like that. Wait till you have the babies and see if they enjoy it. So we bought one swing and we saw, we tested to see if both babies actually enjoyed swings, which they did. Excuse me. Ah. <laughs> they did enjoy swings. So we did end up buying a secondary swing, which actually in the long run, I don't think we even had to do that, but we did. But you don't have to buy two of everything. You do have to buy two of some things. Like you have to buy two things for them to sleep in, like bassinets or pack and plays or whatever. You have to buy, you know, a whole bunch of bottles and things that they're literally going to use every single day. So many burp cloths, things like that. But you don't have to buy two of everything. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, I love this so much. There is like a twin or multiples sorority. Every time you leave the house, it's kind of cool. It, some people get annoyed by it. I don't. When you go outside, you are going to inevitably run into other twin parents or triplet parents, multiple parents. They will come up to you and they are just going to encourage the heck out of you. And someday you're gonna be get to be that parent too, which is really neat, I'm super excited about that. But I have so many people from all different ages. I have, I, <laughs> I've run into um, moms who their twins are like 50 years old now. And they'll still reminisce about what it was like, you know, 50 years ago when they had their twins. Or I'll have, you know, mamas who their twins are three years old or six years old or middle schoolers or whatever. And it's just, it's like a warm hug. It's really, really cool. Again, some people get annoyed by it. I, I don't. And I don't think you should. Like, just prepare yourself that, you know, every time you go out, into public with multiple babies, you are gonna get stopped either by fellow twin parents or just random Joe Schmoes. And the Joe Schmoes are gonna say the same stuff. They're gonna say like, oh, double trouble. Oh, you've got your hands full. Or what always happens is they'll say, oh, my niece has twins or oh, my neighbor's daughter has twins. You know, like they will always connect twins somehow to their life, which is kind of sweet too. But the twin sorority is really, really cool. And it's awesome that someday you and I are going to get to be a part of that and be the encouragement to a fellow twin mama. So there you go. That is the first five. I'm sorry, this was way longer than I anticipated. I will link part two as soon as it goes live, which will be in a couple of days. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, I didn't drink any of my coffee. If you did enjoy this, I would love if you'd consider subscribing and joining our little community. Also, if you are a fellow twin mama or multiples mama, please comment down below your own little tidbits of advice. I want this to just be a giant concoction of advice for future twin mamas. If you are a twin mama, congratulations. It is so awesome. It is literally like the greatest thing on earth. So I hope you're enjoying it. <sighs> It's going to be a wild ride. Anyway, I will talk to you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.